Absolutely. All right, we are back on Morning Line. Thanks morning. for joining us. We are talking this morning about Real. These are the guys with a program that helping at-risk youth here in uh, Middle Tennessee. Uh, with us, Joe Ferris. He's a program uh, coordinator. Also, Tay McGee, Real program director. And now we've uh, brought another one of the, the youngsters that are in the program, Derek Gordon up. Derek, you're 15 years old. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Thanks for coming on. And uh, tell you, give me a little bit of background. How long have you been with Real? Uh, not even a year. How'd you get in? Um, like Referral or your folks or come with justice. J juvenile justice yes, uh, referred you. Did they kind of give you a choice? Say you can go do real or what, what were your options? They said we want you to go. I'm do not that. sure my options, but my mother picked for me and it was a great it was a great choice. What do you think so far? What do you what do you like about it? Uh, that I have two male leaders mm -hmm. and I never had a male a, 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 like a father figure in my life so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got to look up to somebody. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. And right. so you, and these are these are people you trust. Yes. And you've grown from it. And uh, so you you go to school here in at East, did you say? Yes, yeah. What's yes, your sir. plan? You want to um, go to college someday, or what? What kind of things are you into? Yes, I plan on going to college, but I'm still, you know, well, yeah, still thinking. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. You're still only 15. You got a ways to go. But so tell me a little bit about when he got into the program. Uh, let me see when Red got into the program. Uh, Red was a good student. Okay. Uh, he definitely had his situations in school, you know, little issues here and there. But the thing I like about Red is he was always willing to admit to when he made a mistake. Okay. Right? But not also admit to a mistake, he was willing to kind of right his wrong. And uh, after some of the issues that Red went through, he also wanted to be a part of the leadership program, mm -hmm. which is the real part two. So after he went through the eight or nine weeks, after that, he volunteered on his own volition to join into the leadership program. And since he's been in that program, he's been, you know, um, communicating to his peers, being more supportive, trying to get them more information. Um, yeah. I this. You know, you brought something up that I want to make sure we touch on. You guys can all weigh in on this. It's just, it's important to talk about the perception in, in the community with regard to juvenile crime Absolutely. And, 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 and ethnicity and what, how Correct. that may be fairly or unfairly portrayed. Um, you know, my take on it is it has nothing to do ever with anything to do with skin color. It Absolutely. has to do, you're either, you, know, you gotta get in trouble, you don't. Unfortunately, like for instance today, the, mm. the three, I, I assume you guys would be open to helping any youth at risk no, that would sure. come to you. Correct. Caucasian, Hispanic, black, mm. whatever, mm. right? Absolutely. What do you think about the perception out there that I, I I'm totally on the same wavelength with you on this. I think it's it can be misinterpreted, but what, what do you think it's happening? I think, you know, a lot of times when it comes to the media or social media or any platform that's a um, opportunity to kind of be in front of a screen or et cetera, mm -hmm. that a lot of times young black men or brown men or men of color or just youth mm -hmm. right, are being depicted in a way that's reflecting them in a negative image. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's all that's been reflected or kind of sent off into the masses right. and for people not from that community. That's the way that they start to interact with if it's just, If all they're seeing is one mugshot after another or something like that. And again, I, exactly. frankly, I personally don't get mugshots. I don't exactly. see why we need to even see a mugshot. And so if, if on the news or the media, that's all they're yeah. seeing and that's all they keep on repeating, seeing they start believe that these are the behaviors and characteristics of these young people, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're doing, one part of our program is we're making sure that we get these young people and seen into a different light. We want to change the image and the narrative to show these young people for who they really are. Because yeah. a lot of times these young people are doing a lot of great things. Mm -hmm. But all that we are, you know, seeing with these young people are the wrong part, the crime. We're not showing when they're getting straight A's or when they're helping or they're doing community service or service learners project. And a lot of these projects we do with the young people, we don't come up with these ideas. These are ideas that the young people come up with. Yep. Any one of these young men can tell you about the service learning project that they came up with and followed through with and how good it felt, but a lot of time the media is not kind of catching that. Well, part. that's why it's great you bring people up like Derek. And like, for instance, I mean, you hear what he's saying, right, Derek? Yes, I sir. mean, you think there's a perception out there that maybe is unfair when people will, will make a judgment about you? Um, I mean, do, do you think people have preconceived notions one way or the other sometimes? Well, he was in trouble and now he's in this program and, you know, that's it. Yeah. Uh, it's a hard one to answer, isn't it? But I mean, yes, that's kind of what he was saying. So, so different types of programs you've been involved with now since you've been, a, you were saying that they sometimes start up things they're on. Give me some examples of some of the things you've done since you've been in the program. Uh, I like the service learning pro the, the service learning project. What is that? Is that uh, community service or is it? 
I say something like that, but I mean, we made it fun. Yeah. We had to go feed and give give survival kids to the homeless. Oh, okay, and so you're going out and helping in the community. Yes, sir. So how did that make you feel doing something like that as opposed to, you know, great. in the past? Get, doesn't it feel better than getting in trouble? Yes, sir. You know? I mean, it, is that something you'd like to keep doing? Yes, sir. So I didn't know, you didn't mention that program. So some of the kids that you have then end up going out into the community, not just so, jobs, but, mm. but I mean, out there helping the homeless? So basically um, what happens, so service learning is much different from community service. Like bro mentioned, yeah. service learning is something they come up with, an idea they, they brainstorm on and feel like that's the best way they can help the community. And they come up with the so, idea themselves. Yeah, yeah. so like, like Red mentioned, he said they made a survival kit. So basically we got together, what do you want to put in this survival kit? What population do you want to help? They were like, we want to help people that are less fortunate. I don't like to call them homeless. They yeah. just okay. down on their luck right now. So um, basically, they got they made a list of items that they named most important. What kind of stuff did you put on the list? Like, is it clothing uh, or what? What, did you like, what was in the backpack? Do you remember some of the things? Two brush, two pays, yeah. um, toiletries, soap, yeah, um, lotion, like stuff like that. The basic stuff, just right. the basic stuff that folks that are homeless may not have. Right. But well, they also wanted them to give them a backpack when they give them all these items, so they can carry it around. Uh -huh. So yeah, I thought point? that was yeah. innovative as well. Yeah. This is all their ideas. Yeah. So you guys yeah. put them in a position then to come up with these ideas yeah. themselves. Absolutely. And then move forward with that. Process of elimination. Do you want to have a grocery bag, give it to them in a the grocery bag? They might get a hole in it, it might they tear. Will. It was like, well, somebody was like, well, what about a backpack? It was like, where are we going to get the backpacks from? So they had to come up with a whole idea. I was going to ask you, again, you're a nonprofit, so yeah. when they come up with the idea, which is a great one, the idea of the backpack and the stuff you're putting in there, how do you, how do you go about getting the money to pay for this? Well, we're going to put that on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, so I mean, I know there's donations. You have fundraisers. Um, what, what do you do? So donation, fundraiser. We also try to um, utilize resource before we go out and try to find money, right? So okay. before we seek money necessarily, but keep in mind, money is always welcome. Sure. We always love donation okay. and funding and yeah. so on. But what we try to do is use resources first. So in the event that the young people say they want to hand out backpacks and survival kits to the homeless, the first thing we want to do is see which one of our partners already have kind of a lot of backpacks and maybe a surplus. Okay. Try to reach out to them and utilize those resources sure. before we go out and purchase the bag. So we want them to be very creative and also learn how to use those tools of partnerships. So we use this connection. So oh, that makes sense. All right. So you find out where other resources are out there. You bring them into place. So you you have a lot of relationships with other organizations Absolutely. in the Absolutely. community. Yeah, and like you said, you're at Oasis Center and and along those lines. Do you guys have once they come to you any interaction with law enforcement? I mean, in terms of perception and getting along or whatever, and just how attitudes toward law enforcement. How do you guys view that? How do you handle? It? I mean, because some of these kids are there because they've yeah. gotten in trouble with all, and, and there can be an adversarial la relationship sometimes in the minds of some. I'm just wondering yeah. how you deal with that. Man, ask that question, what, what, what way do you say how do we interact with law enforcement? Like, do they just in terms of, do you discuss it, or will you sometimes meet with law enforcement, or do you have sometimes a police officer come talk to the kids, or vice versa, to kind of air just feelings about you may have? Um, I don't know. I just, because if the only interaction they've had with him sometimes is because they maybe they've gotten in trouble, you know, um, and there can be an adversarial mindset one way or the other. Maybe even the perception for these officers is the way they view them. If they could meet someone like him, it would change their views. Absolutely. I'm just curious if, if, that, um, if there's a part of that. I mean, basically, we, we have those conversations of what to do in the event that, you know, you're in a situation where you're working with law enforcement. Okay. Just do do what you should. Be compliant. Listen. Make sure that, you know, you, you're in a space where you should be or you're um, paying attention and listening, being aware of what's going on because it's ne we never want them to be in a compromising situation sure. where they um, feel threatened or anything like that. But still, like I said, this is what anyone, be respectful, listen, and then I, was, I don't want to say comply, but like, you know, make sure you, you do what you're supposed to. So we've had those conversations. Okay. Tay, you guys have been doing this now, um, the organization real 10 years, you said? Yep, 10 years. I'm just curious, over the last couple of years, as you guys have observed, I mean, is the situation with juvenile crime in your mind getting better or worse? Mm. The nature of the level of crime, perhaps, um, I mean, I think organizations like yours are more important now than ever before. I just do, because the need's there. 
I can't say necessarily that the crime is getting better at work because I don't really always keep up with the day and statistics. I'm just what wondering what you see day in and day, day out, the types of kids coming in and the need for what the services you provide. I think some of the things that kind of been again perpetuated that we're seeing on a daily basis do look like a lot more severe and serious crimes. And a lot of young people are engaging in activities where we consider more of the adult behaviors mm -hmm. of the criminal past. Mm -hmm. um, what I will say um, before I get too deep in that is one thing I love is the way that the courts are supporting the young people in the event in the sense of making sure that they're finding programs and uh, are diversion programs that are going to be supportive of these young people and actually give them rehabilitation or working more on uh, prevention over mm -hmm. intervention mm -hmm. like supporting them on the front end so we don't get to that part but as far as the crimes that come in we um i do see them i do recognize them as a sense of the same thing that's been promoted um through social media tv and so on um it is kind of harsh there are some dangerous things you know it's a lot mm -hmm. of killings going on etc and we just trying to be there to support them we yeah. more focus on the positive things that they're doing we're more focused on how can we be there to engage with them before we get to that point Derek you think the way where you are right now because of the example they've said I mean you're pretty confident in yourself that you're just gonna move forward and succeed yes, not sir. get in trouble and you know put that stuff behind you and and just pursue your dreams yes sir I mean, it's just, is it, is it confidence? Because, uh, you know, like the other guys up here, I could just sense a confidence level in them that maybe they, in that they have role models to look up to. How big a difference does that make for you? Um, I mean, Tay and Joe's are like great role models for me. Uh, yeah. And I mean, yeah. I mean, without that, you, know, you have someone yeah. that you can emulate. You can see how these guys have succeeded in their lives. And they give you just, I'll tell you, confidence is, take you a long way, my friend. <laughs> you have confidence in yourself. <laughs> Listen, thanks for coming on, Derek. We're going to take another break. We'll be back and can continue our conversation with our guests about Real, which does some great works in the community, um, right after this. Stay with us.